Welcome to the PhonoArena.com review of the Sanyo Katana LX. The Katana LX is the latest member of the Katana family from Sanyo, but comes in at a more entry level point than any of the previous ones. It still has the same VGA camera as found on the Katana and the Katana 2, but downgrades the screen from QVGA down to 160 by 128. The phone is also thicker than previous Katanas although it is narrow, making for a little bit easier in-hand feel. As you can see, the surface is highly mirrored. There's a hidden OLED display that will pop up when you hit a button on the outside or when you get a call or an event coming in. That quickly disappears after a few seconds. The camera sits up at top, there is no flash, and below it is a speaker. On the left hand side, you have a micro USB charging port. We like the fact that Sanyo has already adopted what will be a standard next year for many of the carriers. There's also a volume rocker and a camera button. On the right side you simply have a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack and on the back it's very plain. All you have is the battery release latch which takes off the door and exposes the battery. On the inside you have the small display sitting up at the top. With so much space around it, we really would have liked to see a larger display here. The keypad also isn't a strong point of the phone. It uses the same basic design that Samuels has used for years, that is to say, individual hard plastic keys. One thing we found particularly infuriating about this design is these keys ringing the directional pad. The left and right soft key, the camera key, and the back key. These keys are very narrow, which makes them hard to press. The rest of the keys are easy enough to press, and they all have pretty good travel, but we really don't like the feel of the soft plastic, I'm sorry, the hard plastic. It gives the phone a decidedly cheap feel, and it's something that we'd like to see Sanyo address in the future. As far as the interface itself goes, it's pretty similar to any other of the Sprint phones out there. You have nine options from the home screen. Typical features like settings, tools, and phone books are all there, as well as the web. This is only a 1X phone, so it does not have 3G data. In general, the menu is laid out pretty well, but in the settings, there is a whole lot of different options. We'd like to see a little bit better organization, because this can become overwhelming to the user, especially since this is targeted at the more entry level. The camera interface is pretty straightforward. There's nothing real special about it. You simply load it up, focus on your subject, and snap. You can then send that picture through Sprint's picture mail service or set it as a background. We really do like the phone's feel. Even though it's a bit thicker, which means it feels different in the pocket, it is thinner or narrower which gives it the better in-hand feel. Sanyo doesn't use the highest quality materials, but it still feels pretty solidly constructed and we're not too concerned about the overall wear and tear on the phone. For an entry-level phone, the Katana LX is a great model. The speakerphone's loud, the call quality is good, and the reception is excellent. We'd like to see Sprint drop the price right now. Currently it's selling for $49.99 and we think it would be better deserved as a free phone or something more in the $20 range. But we still wouldn't have a problem recommending the LX for someone who's looking for just a good, solid phone.